working as assistant professor in civil engineering department kit so in this lecture uh, series of lectures uh, we are going to discuss on the uh, course that is structural health monitoring and retrofitting there are six units uh, in this uh, whole series so we begin with the unit number 1 that is structural health so today's the first uh, lecture of this series the lesson we are going to discuss is introduction to the <coughs> structural health so here in uh, structural health as a human uh, being uh, required a good health to survive throughout its uh, lifespan the same as a structural that is uh, any building or the bridge or any constructed uh, constructed infrastructure requires a good health to sustain throughout its uh, sur its service life so health that is structural health refers to overall condition of integrity of that building or bridges or any constructed type of infrastructure which ability to perform an intended functions safely throughout its service life so why did this uh, structural health or maintenance or maintaining the good uh, structural health is important because of the safety durability and functionality of the structure whether it is a uh, residential building or commercial building or any public structure or infrastructure projects to sustain in any environmental condition also so if the structure health being poor or poor uh, structure health can leads to the uh, failure or posing risk to the human life and leading to the significant fin uh, financial losses the financial losses due to its maintenance or maintenance cost in routine maintenance or yearly maintenance whatever the annual maintenance so uh, whatever the uh, losses to the uh, owner at a higher uh, higher end so here structure health is very much important and plays vital uh, role in the construction industry to maintain the life of that building so next point that is uh, what are the different factors which affect the structural health so there are few uh, factors uh, on the basis the so structural health get uh, affected so first factor that is uh, environmental factor in environmental factor uh, whatever the structure uh, building bridge or any infrastructure projects uh, which we stand in a uh, environment which faces different uh, environmental factors that like uh, temperature variation then uh, moisture and humidity and wind load so due to the tempera temperature uh, variation uh, whatever the steel structure or uh, a concrete structure undergoes the contraction <coughs> and uh, elongation uh, expansion and contraction then in case of the moisture and humidity condition uh, of environmental factor whatever the structure uh, undergoes uh, freeze and thaw condition uh if the moisture uh, we, if we consider the moisture uh most of the time uh the structure get uh leads to the permeability issue so in another uh, factor environmental factor that is uh, wind load so every structure is uh, while designing every structure is considered for the wind load wind and different envelopes are considered while uh, designing but the building is required to sustain in every condition that is temperature moisture humidity and wind without collapse or without disturbing its functionality so these are the major factors uh, which affects the structural health so higher temperature creates the cracks in concrete or uh, whatever the expansion and contraction issue moisture and humidity creates some surface defects of the concrete structure <coughs> and wind load which uh, creates some uh, issue regarding its integrity and stability so next factor that is material properties so again the quality issue of the material which uh, involves in the manufacturing of the product like uh, concrete 
Concrete is a major uh, material used in construction industry here we are discussing about the same. So, in uh, consideration of the material property, so its health is basically depend on the what type of material we used, what are its physical properties, what are its chemical properties, all these are considered while planning of the project also. So, here the material property as the aging, the material get degrade or also by the its utilization, the material get deteriorate and the structural health get affect. So, again the second point that is quality of uh, construction material like physical property, chemical property, what is the in case we consider a rebar or a steel or reinforcement. So, tensile strength is a major factor. We consider uh, concrete then compression strength is a major, co uh, ma major consideration of material properties. So, every material have its own properties, possess own properties requires for functioning of the building components. Then <coughs> next factor which affects the structural health that is design and consideration. So, that there are two main uh, points in designing consideration that is design flaw and construction flaw practices. So, in first design flaw that is there is a some mistake while designing the whole structure by the structural engineer like the misconduct of the uh, any uh, procedure of the designing, designing procedure of the structure. So, different clauses not considered or uh, different condition, loading conditions or whatever the analysis is done by the uh, structure uh, engineer may be uh, uh, wrong at the time of uh, the uh, initiation or uh, planning. So, due to that the design flaws are occurs and which affect the structure health. That here is the third whatever the uh, picture shows the column uh, get collapse at the overlapping. It is the major issue in a design flaw because there is a no proper overlapping provided, proper stirrups spacing provided with the column and which occurs or which leads to the defects like cracks, collapse, buckling and uh, twisting also. So, that happens due to that components unable to sustain the loads coming from the upper floor. Here the second point that is construction practices, whatever the two figure first uh, figure, what is the corrosion cracks and ex, ex, uh, exposure of that reinforcement. This is due to the bad construction practices, what are the uh, second figure? that shear wall which is uh, a honeycomb like structure or not uh, proper uh, concrete get compacted at the corner of that uh, shear wall. So, due to this whatever we, we uh, whatever uh, our consideration while uh, designing this project or designing this component see it's totally failed due to this construction practices because the combination of that concrete and steel is not up to the mark up to the limit. So, these uh, factors which affect the structural health design flaw and construction practices which, uh, which leads to the cracks then exposure uh, to the environment uh, reinforcement uh, exposure to the environment which affect the structural health. Then the last factor that is uh, usage and load patterns. So, every uh, building is planning at its initiation, uh, initiation stage that is conceptualization or concept of that project and at that stage the project is considered for specific purpose. If we consider the project is for residential purpose then its use it will be used throughout its life for the only residential purpose. If we consider it is industrial building, then it also it 
again behave or uh, utilize by the occupants or by the uh, whatever the habitants or by the workers for that purpose only. So, here the factor which affects the structural health due to the usage and load pattern, there is change changes in usage. Like for example, if we consider a floor is considered only for the habitat purpose, okay, that is a residential building and we consider some load for the furnitures also. But due to the some changes from the client or from the users or from the habitat or occupants, here that utilization is changes by its uh, or by uh, different practices they replace that furniture by the different products heavy products and whatever the floor we design whatever the slab we design cannot sustain that load and due to this condition which leads to affect the structural health the second picture shows the example of overloading in a staircase pattern, a staircase uh, area. So, that members, whatever the uh, stair flight and the landings and the columns and supporting beams that get collapsed due to the overloading. Structure deterioration mechanism, how the structure get deteriorate. So, deterioration uh, by means of corrosion of uh, reinforcement as picture shows the exposed uh, whatever the uh, rebars or reinforce get corroded in a, a brown color over there. So, which ultimately weakens uh, the capacity of load ca uh, load carrying capacity of that member that is uh, the beam. Whatever the bottom picture shows here, the first is the beginning of rusting of that uh, member or a rebar. So, rebar which is in contact with the moisture get corrodes and the iron oxide creates then which uh, <coughs> leads to the cracks and surface get uh, spoiled. So, here before corrosion the first figure is accurate uh, and we require to maintain this throughout its life. But due to the build up of the corrosion corrosion of the product the cracks create and once crack create the further surface cracks and stains appears on the surface which the alarm first alarm that is the structural health is not good then at the last step eventually the spalling of that concrete and uh, the corroded uh, bars get exposed which leads to the deterioration of whole member. So, what are the different causes uh, of this uh, <coughs> deterioration? So, when the reinforcement get contact in an environment or in what uh, in contact with the water, this uh, condition happens. Then, next deterioration is cracking. So, we seen uh, the different types of cracks. So, there are main two types of cracks. First one is the structural cracks and second one is the non-structural cracks. When uh, structural cracks, cracks are very dangerous in comparison with the non-structural cracks because the non-structural cracks we can repair easily and which cannot directly affect the, the load carrying capacity of that structure. So, here are some uh, types of cracks. Uh, <coughs> and the causes of uh, the consequences, but the cracks are due to the plastic settlement, plastic shrinkage, then early age shrinkage, the contraction, crazing, alkali aggregate reaction in that ingredients, then shear in between the components, flexure, thermal shock, kickers and whatever we provide the tire rods due to that, the deterioration happens. So, here the different types of crack like corrosion cracks which appears on the surface beside the stains, then diagonal cracks, then horizontal cracks to the columns and splitting cracks. The splitting cracks happens in the columns 
at the overlapping section. Then <coughs> horizontal cracks and diagonal cracks we uh, can seen at the uh, part of the uh, joints of column and uh, beam at the corner also. Then structure deterioration mechanism uh, again the point that is fatigue and wear. The fatigue that is uh, due to the failure of mechanism involves the cracking of the material and structural component due to the cyclic loading, due to cyclic loading or cycling, uh, cyclic stress means a fluctuating stress. Is there any condition in civil engineering like the this condition happens in a bridge, this condition happens in a gates of dam where the rolling component is there okay and due to this the fatigue wear happens or occurs so fatigue wear is a type of wear which the surface damage the material takes place due to the strain induced on the surface which leads to the wear of both the component which is in contact to each other so that depends upon the particular number of cycles to a certain critical limit. Whatever the picture shows, the ro uh, rolling motion of the uh, heavy member on the surface which fragmented uh, creates the some wear of the surface and which affects the structural health. This is the one type of the structure deterioration. The next part that is structure uh, importance of structure monitoring. So, as a human being is monitoring his health time to time or checking, we call it as a health checkup at some interval. Likewise, we require to health checkup for the structural members or the buildings or the different infrastructure project time to time to maintain its structural in integrity, longevity, durability and functionality of the project. So, so importance is <coughs> very uh, for uh, importance of that uh, structural health and uh, monitoring in which we are uh, going to discuss uh, how it important and what are the benefits of uh, SHM. So, your structural health monitoring system provides the valuable insights into the condition of structure enabling planners to make better decision regarding maintenance and helps to ensure the safety of the structure inhabitants. So, it is important because the habitant or occupants or the maintenance team get idea about the activity what happens in monitoring condition or uh, structural health monitoring uh, activity uh, they analyze the uh, condition the current condition of the structure and plan for the maintenance uh, whether it is uh, preventive maintenance or uh, preventive maintenance or routine maintenance so uh, benefits of uh, structural health uh, monitoring so, due to the structural health monitoring, we get the early detection of issues which, which are discussed earlier like different cracks, then wear and fatigue and spelling or uh, deterioration due to the overloading. So, these all are detected early and due to this, we can easily plan the maintenance or uh, retrofitting work or the reconstruction of that project. In. So, structural health monitoring is beneficial at every stage throughout the its lifespan of the structure. 